Uh, Lucy and Diver, have you ever seen a flying saucer and or a ghost? Uh, I have not ever seen a flying saucer. I have not ever seen a ghost. Have I experienced some freaky things? Um, possibly. <laughs> um, if, if you're willing to share, what kind of freaky things are we talking about? Oh, well, um, okay. So when I went to uh, went to Salem to research uh, one of the vamped books, um, just stepping out, even just stepping out of the, the car in Salem. Now, I won't say I am somebody who's necessarily sensitive to, to, to vibes, to things, um, but even just stepping out of the car in Salem, um, you just, it, it feels different. It, it just, it just does. People say that it's the most haunted place in America, or I've heard Savannah, or I've heard other places. Um, but to me, um, just stepping out of the car in Salem felt different. It, it did. And I, I felt something even just in Salem. Um, but we went on a ghost tour and I, I'm very aware that on ghost tours, sometimes people will, um, you know, either make up or emphasize a story or point to this building as someplace something happened just because this building happens to be still standing, but maybe it took place over here, but it's an empty lot or whatever. But anyway, we are on a ghost a ghost tour, and they're talking about um, Dread Sheriff Corwin and and how horrible he was, and and he was he was he was very horrible. Um, and this one story that existed, and I uh, my apologies if I'm mangling the story that I've forgotten in the years since I did this. But um, so so back during that time, um, once you entered a plea, um, your your goods could be basically confiscated. Um, until your guilt or innocence was determined. And if your guilt was determined, then um, your, your goods could be um, uh, uh, basically or permanently basically given over to, to the, um, the Commonwealth or whatever to, it was given to them. I forget what the details were, but anyway, but, the, but, um, but they could then confiscate your wealth. And, um, and so this one family's wealth had basically been been confiscated, um, and <clears throat> and so when the sheriff died um, and was laid to rest, they stole his body um, and were holding it hostage against um, his family um, to recover their wealth from his family for the return of his remains. Was the story that that she was telling. And um, the person who was giving the ghost tour, and she was saying, and this is the house where his remains were, you know, kept his skeletonized remains and all, and she's making it very creepy. Well, and we had our backs to this other building while she's telling the tale. And, um, and I, I could not, my, I, I was just getting this horribly creepy feeling from the building that we had our backs to. And I literally could not stand with my back to this building. I just, it was, it was, as if there was something traveling up and down my back, this just creepy sense traveling up and down my back. And I, I just literally, I could not um, have my back to this building. And I didn't know what it was, but I thought, I don't know what she's talking about here, but I'm pretty sure it happened right there behind me. I just, I, I just, I, I could not. And I had to move from where I was standing and I've never felt anything like that before. And I, I'm not saying it was or it wasn't, but all I'm saying is, if it happened anywhere, I'm pretty sure it was the place that was behind me and that it was it was all creepy as hell as all heck, heck, if you can say that. Anyway, um, it, it was very creepy. And um, again, not saying anything, but from that ghost tour, I had the weirdest things. My camera literally shut down. I had charged it just before going on the ghost tour. I, it had shut down. And before it had shut down, I got some really seriously weird pictures, not, not the orbs that, you know, but, but some serious, like crazy streaks across the, and I'd gotten all kinds of crazy things on my camera shutting down and, um, only on Salem, never, never before or since. Um, so I've never seen a ghost, but I really seriously could not have my back to that building, could not focus on what she was saying or listen to her through the rest of that thing. It freaked me out. That's so the experience, uh, like that, knowing that you have had an interest in comparative religions, um, does that offer evidence that's counter, you think, or does that offer a little bit of support? I, I don't know. If there was going to be a malignant spirit sticking around, it would certainly be Sheriff Corwin. 
Uh, he was malignant as all get out. Um, he was the one, um, and apologies if I'm getting this wrong or the name wrong, he was the one, there's this horrible story. I am apparently very morbid. There's this horrible story. Let me tell you about it. Um, <laughs> so there's this older man during the witch trials um, who'd been accused of, uh, accused of witchcraft. And um, he was a much older man and he refused to enter a plea knowing that when he did, his, his goods would be confiscated and he wanted them um, preserved for his um, descendants. And um, so he refused to enter a plea. So Sheriff Corwin insisted that he be pressed he, to enter a plea, literally pressed, have um, stones piled on him. And so out behind um, the jail, they piled, um, they piled blocks on him. Um, and so for three days, he was out there with no, no food, no water and everything, just having blocks pressed on him. And on the third day, um, Sheriff Corbin went out to see if he was ready to enter a plea and his son was hanging out and everything else, as the story goes. And um, Sheriff Corbin took his cane and put his tongue back in his mouth and said, are you ready to enter a plea? To which all he responded was more weight and more weight was put on him and he died. This is how horrible this man was. And so I, I, I do believe if there was gonna be anyone who stuck around, it was gonna be him. And I, and I won't lie, I, I do think that maybe um, Sheriff Corwin in this experience I had inspired the Bose Whites that appear in my, the malignant spirits, the Bose Whites that appear in my epic fantasy. Um, that I, now that I think about it, it never occurred to me that that experience might be what inspired them, but, um, but I think that that might be. Well, that goes back to what we were talking about uh, at the start of this thing, that a little bit of horror, a little bit of history gives you some better appreciation for your current circumstances. Like, oh, well, nobody's put extra weight on me and put my put my tongue back in my mouth today. It could have been worse. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. And like you were saying, horror and history, pretty much the same thing. Yeah.